have ASD have problems with attention. And so if you use simple, direct language with lots of repetition, in a kind, friendly, supportive manner, they respond best to that approach. People who can't plan, who can't uh, create their own timelines, they need somebody to do that for them. They need help. And the people who live with FASD who are the most successful that I've ever encountered are the people who A, have that help, and B, accept that help. So it's a two-way street, you know, and, and part of it is making them understand that they need the help. I don't really like help. It makes me feel like I can't do it. So if, I, so if I'm independent and I can prove to myself I can do it, and I can do it because I did it myself. Usually, I think, between the ages of 14 and 20, you're not going to convince them that they need that help. I mean, they're like every other teenager, you know, I can do it, I can do it. And they can't do it, and that's, and that's where we're going to see all these problems. A lot of times we get them in conflict with the law. But they can graduate from that um, if they survive, and some of it, a lot of it is just surviving. They have to survive it. It's a very complicated system in terms of the fundamentals that underlie what you were trying to do in a criminal courtroom and we as lawyers have to make sure our clients understand their rights and to do that we have to know how to speak properly to our clients and to get information properly from our clients and if we don't understand that the client has a brain injury really then we can't necessarily get the right information from the client it's very difficult you need to remember that we're dealing with the developmental age of these individuals and not the chronological age so we could have a 35-year-old man that we have to explain things to like a 12-year-old. So people that work with FAS or that are going to be working with FAS need to understand that there's, there's a major difference in their, their cognitive functioning. You don't want to ask for a sentence that your client cannot comply with because of the FASD. So you have to, for example, a co a probation conditions, lots and lots of conditions that are complex, you're just setting your client up to fail. So you have to think about all, all the way through the process, you have to think about it. We have to try to build whatever sentence that is imposed around the individual as opposed to telling that individual to contort his or her norms to the justice system norms because that won't happen and they're not physically capable. It's like telling somebody with a wheelchair to climb up the stairs. I mean, we would never do that. We would never say with someone who, who's disability is visible to do something that we know they cannot do. But here we're dealing with an invisible disability and we are always telling them to do things that they can't do. If you have the right supports in place, you can make a difference. If those supports aren't there, they're just going back to the same old thing over and over and over again. When you're working with somebody that's severely affected, you become their external brain. You're setting everything up for them, um, housing, finances, everything. When you're working with somebody that's a little less affected, there is ability there. It's just finding a way to enhance it and bring it out. People suggest that FASD is perhaps some sort of terminal diagnosis, that there's nothing that can be done for them, which in fact is not the case. Uh, what they need to do is recognize the disorder and learn to live with that disorder by adjusting their lifestyle to accommodate the particular problems that they face. And through education and counseling and support, they can do those things.